live from the University of Trinidad and Tobago, Tamana campus. The students, faculty, staff and administration of the university's animation and gaming hub welcome you to the launch of the Trinidad and Tobago animation production factory, TAP Factory. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Miss Universe 1998, Wendy Fitzwilliam. Today, in exactly one hour, we cut the ribbon and press play on a dream turned reality, the animation of a vision. Today marks the launch of the most advanced blended educational and commercial facilities in animation in the region. It combines on the educational side the Department of Animation and Gaming, and on the commercial side, the Trinidad and Tobago Animation Production Factory, TAP Factory. Together, they erase barriers and distances between students and professionals, the world of learning and the world of business and commerce in the industry. Welcome to the future of animation. To get us started here, at the Animation Hub at Tamina, UTT, the city in the forest. We'll be joined by Minister Nyan Gatsby Dolly and our longtime collaborators from Toon Boone, the IDB, and business consultant for TAP, Joan Vogelsang. Our counterparts at the Cove Hub on the Sister Isle will also join us online and a special presentation of the 2021 inaugural Tamina Award for Excellence will be made to Professor Kenneth Julian for his contribution to the world of education and technology. Plus, you're invited for the first public tour of this amazing complex. So let's get animated. And me, 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 what about me? Miss U.98. Yep, where's my lower third? Thank you. She's not in the script. Is she in the script? I don't. Well, I am now. This is my universe. I have connections in here. Makes sense. That's why we never get a chance to miss you. Point nine eight. Yep. So join me. <clears throat> join join us, us and all our guests at the place where dreams and possibilities get, get animated. animated. Starting now. Mwah! Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman and the president of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. As chairman of the board of governors of the University of Trinidad and Tobago, I am pleased to welcome you to the launch of UDT's Tamana Technology and Animation Production Factory. This animation hub is meant to train students, support local entrepreneurs, and also operate as a commercial center, providing services in animation, game art, music technology, and visual effects for the entertainment, advertising, and ICT sectors, among others, whereby companies locally and internationally, can outsource work to the hub at competitive prices and state-of-the-art high quality. The launch is integrated into the opening of the 20th edition of the annual Anime Carib Animation and Digital Media Festival, which, as its website says, is the Caribbean's biggest and most prestigious animation festival, providing a platform for the development of animators, as well as the exposure of animation as a viable business for innovative animators in the Caribbean to develop, expand, and showcase their talents to a wider local and international audience. Anime Carib Festival attracts top animators from studios such as DreamWorks, Ardman, Pixar, Cartoon Network, and Nickelodeon to Trinidad and Tobago. With a base in Trinidad and Tobago, under the astute leadership of UDT's own Camille Selvan Abrams, the festival has had the opportunity to showcase similar festivals in Barbados, Jamaica, Suriname, and recently at an expo in Washington, USA. We at UDT wish to thank all those who have supported the university, and in particular, 
on this special occasion of the launch of the animation hub within the UTT animation program, which started in 2008 through the foresight of Professor Kenneth Julian and the commitment of Mrs. Camille Selvan Abrams, head of the unit. Special thanks for the support of the government of Trinidad and Tobago and the Inter-American Development Bank, without which support this world-class facility would not be a reality. Sit back and enjoy a virtual tour of this facility, the work of our graduates, and the services provided by the Tamana Technology and Animation Production Factory. Good day. Let me also add my voice to welcome you all to the launch of the Tamana Technology and Animation Production Factory located here at the Tamla Intech Park, the site of UTT's flagship campus. It must be noted that only recently this campus was accredited, and therefore the launch of this hub can take place now. Now this hub is a state-of-the-art facility, very high-tech equipment, which we intend to use and will provide a platform to build upon the ingenuity and creativity of our students and the population at large. We are very fortunate in that we have a very diverse population here in which creativity comes from various streams from almost all continents on the planet. And therefore, what we must do is to build upon it and produce products that can be sold worldwide. The creativity is shown in the fact that the last century, the only instrument that was created was the steel pan, which we all know about. Lesser known is something called a dhantal that's unique to the world that was created here in Trinidad and Tobago also. So we have a lot of creativity here. We need to harness it. And this hub here, we intend to do that. The hub will be the first step in what should be an ambitious pro pro uh, project. We have Hollywood, we have Bollywood. And here in Trinidad and Tobago, we should start Trollywood, where we start producing animation and films that can go worldwide to generate income for the country and to put us on a map. So again, I want to thank all, all those people who labored hard for many years to bring this project to fruition. We thank you, and I give the assurance that it will be worth a while, and this project will blossom and flourish to the pride of UTT and Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. TAP Factory functions as the commercial arm of the facility. Here, students and emerging and experienced animation professionals share spaces and develop technologies and ideas that push and serve real-world commercial interests. Here is where the creativity, collaboration and problem-solving that is developed through education will push the industry forward in the competitive global environment. Coming up next are two guests at the leading edge of local education and development. First, Minister Nyan Gatsby Dolly, Minister of Education, and Karina Coburn, Country Representative, Inter American Development Bank, Trinidad and Tobago. Today is a landmark day in Trinidad and Tobago's educational advancement. Today marks the realization of a vision that speaks to the actualization of our competitive advantage in the region. It is right here at the Tamna campus through the output of creativity and innovation for international consumption. This is education with a global vision. I am indeed excited to be part of this launch event, its format, a representation of our new reality. As Minister with Responsibility for Education, I very often speak about the transformation of the education system. And while, yes, that indeed refers to the structures, systems, and technologies, more so, it refers to what we do today and moving forward to prepare our nation's children for a world we cannot predict. What the last almost two years has taught us is that the education of the future is not tied to brick and mortar, 
or geographical boundaries. Our current reality must allow for a transient, almost nomadic employee whose only dependency is that of a strong internet connection. Science and innovative technologies have become central to the creation of ideas brought to life. This is what today is about for me. It's about the new paradigm, the new reality that we must all understand is the world that the student of tomorrow is preparing for. From the Marvel and Justice League cinematic universe to the evolving worlds of Star Wars and Star Trek, these movies have brought the pages of some of our most famous comics to life, and ideas of hyperspace and teleportation simply a matter of when and not how. Characters who grace the pages of books and who we thought to be only in our imagination, they've come to life on our screens through the magic of animation and special effects. The line between our reality and our imagination is blurred by these cinematic wonders and innovations of today. And it is this ideation that must drive the skill sets of tomorrow. This is what our education system today must provide for our students as we prepare them for a world that in less than two years has morphed into one where our screens have become the portal to any location imaginable. Today, we speak of hybrid education, virtual school and gaming platforms like Roblox that cut across the boundaries of the virtual and the real world, allowing for communities across borders. If this is our now, how do we prepare students to capitalize on this trajectory for the future? The answer is right here at this UTT technology and animation production factory. It will not only train students in digital media, animation, game art, asset creation, and more. It will create a new model where expertise drives the facility, but is actually student-led. It will provide an all-encompassing environment for tech outsourcing services, thereby enabling and encouraging innovation and specialized skills, not only within the university, but also in the local and regional industry. Innovation is our new currency. Our people, especially our young people, are our greatest asset, and we must nurture them because the output of this technology and animation factory has a limitless earning potential for Trinidad and Tobago. It has the potential to significantly contribute to strengthening and promoting economic growth in the sector and immediately provide employment for students in the fields of animation, gaming, and music technology. This indeed fits into the vision for our education sector. Modern, relevant, quality, education for all. We must have a cadre of innovators trained in internationally marketable skills in fields that are in demand without suffering the ill effect of a brain drain. If nothing else, the last two years has taught us that technology, innovation, and imagination have a symbiotic relationship. The experiences demanded in the world of tomorrow must be anticipated and imagined today so that we can give our students the best chance of success. I congratulate the president, chair, administration, and students of the University of Trinidad and Tobago. Authentically ours, this animation program in UTT started in 2008 as a teaching facility delivering a diploma program and a bachelor's degree starting in 2018 seeing its first cohort of BFA graduates in 2021. Today's launch is a manifestation of your sustained focus on skills upgrade actualized in the development of a commercial animation hub at the UTT flagship campus terminal. This model of an all-encompassing environment that provides services in animation, game art, music technology, and visual effects for game design Film and advertisements must now be effectively marketed to ensure its earning potential is maximized. In closing, I leave you with a quote from Dr. Eric Williams, 
one that I believe captures the essence of what has been achieved here today, and it is this. To increase student engagement and ownership of learning, we should give students opportunities to do meaningful work, work that makes a difference locally, nationally, and globally. Again, congratulations, thank you, and God bless. The global animation industry is estimated to generate some 222 billion US dollars globally. We are confident that IDB Labs contribution of 925,000 US and counterpart resources of 926,000 US will definitely help prepare local students and entrepreneurs to tap into this high potential market. The funds will be used to assist professionals in this sector to attract, secure, and deliver on international contracts by providing access to ongoing training, state-of-the-art production facilities, market linkages, quality assurance, and creation of a viable business model to grow this sector in Trinidad and Tobago. Specifically, the IDB Group's involvement is a business investment to support the animation, gaming, and music technology sector in TNT and facilitate the export of services in this area to the international market. This partnership with the University of Trinidad and Tobago will advance these goals and promote training and capacity building in a non-traditional field which is part of the digital economy. This program will be supported by IDB Lab, which is the innovation laboratory of the IDB group. We see innovation not only as implementing ideas, but for TNT as an opportunity to expand to sectors outside oil and gas. Our expectation is that this will lead to the successful positioning of the Tamana Tech Factory as a commercially viable and competitive hub in the animation and content development space. As the country moves forward with its digital transformation efforts, this animation hub can be a great contributor to many international contract opportunities being outsourced from all around the world. The IDB Group will continue to develop this strong relationship with UTT as a great partner within the academic sphere of Trinidad and Tobago. We are aware that the UTT team is comprised of industry practitioners with many years of experience who have developed strong relationships with the key partners in this market. We trust them to bring this animation hub to life and we will be there to support them in achieving this goal to benefit a broad range of stakeholders within the creative sector. I'd like to say congratulations to the UTT and IDB Lab teams for all their hard work and dedication in bringing this program to fruition in both islands of Trinidad and Tobago. We are looking forward to seeing great returns in the immediate future. Thank you ladies. I am now here with Camille Salvon Abrams, the mastermind really behind Tap Factory and the head of UTT's animation program. Camille, welcome. Wendy, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Girl, and we are about to chat with one of our compatriots who's really been supportive of this program and animation in the Caribbean generally since inception, aren't we? 
Oh my God, this is like, I've been waiting for this for years, right, Wendy? So <laughs> Literally a couple of decades. <laughs> decades Joan yes. Vogel Sang, <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to let Camille share a little bit of your background with our audience. So Joan, as, Joan is, um, uh, 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 she has been part of animation history in, in the Caribbean. Because from day one, we connected to discuss how the Caribbean can fit into that bigger picture. Because the yes. industry is, as you know, global, but the Caribbean never had a space there. So as formerly as the president of Toon Boom Animation, president and CEO of Toon Boom Animation, Joan actually has been part of this industry. She's visited Trinidad and Tobago several times. She's also met many of our ministers of trade, almost all of our ministers <laughs> of trade since then. And she continues to be a support. And we're really, really happy to have her here. Joan, welcome. Thank you. We're so happy to have you. I'm going to let Camille launch right into this afternoon's discussion. Yes. Camille? So Joan, you know, I mean, this moment is, what, what does this mean to you? Because as I said before, you are, you have been there from, for many years. What does it feel like, this moment? I think it's a pivotal moment. When we met 20 years ago, you were going back to Trinidad from England. I had grown up in Trinidad and gone to bishops. You contacted me with this dream of building this sector in Trinidad and the Caribbean at large. And we subsequently met uh, Professor Julian, who was able to really feed off the vision because we all recognized that, you know, oil and gas was not going to be going forever. And we also had an interest in creating jobs that would help youngsters to move into the middle class. As a result of which, knowing this industry as well as I did, I recognized it was growing and that we could train people on the ground to hook into that global ecosystem and actually earn really good wages in a sector that the young were interested in. Because part of the discouraging aspect for the young people was that they have a very good education. They want to hook into the modern uh, jobs that are out there in multimedia, gaming, medical imaging, etc but there wasn't an ability to do that in their own countries. So we started out on this journey 20 years ago, and today we're giving birth to it. I mean, it's an incredible feeling. It is, uh, you know, to your vision, to your focus, to all of the people on the ground that have worked with you in Trinidad, being able to steer that ship for so long. And I've been absolutely honored to just be a part of the journey. Joan, thank you so very much. You know, this afternoon, your uh, global audience really is looking on. Your network is part of uh, this launch. What would you like your network to know about the Caribbean in animation? Well, first of all, I'd like them to know that we currently have quite a number of people trained within uh, the Caribbean uh, geography that are able to really jump into action very quickly to be involved with animation production. The people of the Caribbean have always been very creative. The general standard of education is very high. Everyone can communicate in English. It's very close to the United States where a lot of the major studios are. So the time zones are convenient also for Canada, South America, and Europe has a very strong connection to the Caribbean. So it's very intuitive that they would want to work with studios and individuals to be able to complete their productions. And more recently, we've been doing a lot of work in, in Africa, places like Kenya. Uh, and there's a strong bond between the Caribbean and Africa. So I think that it is very intuitive to see the Caribbean as part of the solution for the situation that we find ourselves in today, where there is more demand for content than there are people able to develop a content. This has never been a better time. And the growth is incredible. I mean, you just have to look at the number of jobs that 
are not filled today in the sector to realize that this is a growing sector, it's a young sector, and we can help people to move into the middle class with good jobs and to become entrepreneurs and run their own studios. So I just think the Caribbean is, is the next place. We have talked all over the world about the Caribbean, and every time we have, people have said, we really want to go and work there. So, you know, I think it, it, it speaks for itself. That's fantastic. Um, you know, Joan, one of the things that I am excited about is putting our students to work. For me, that is the meaning of this. This is what this is all about. So for yeah. you coming on, you are going to be, or you are an official consultant of Tap Factory. And I'm so happy to celebrate that, finally. What do you see, like for instance, in, you know, in five years for Tap Factory, what are, what are you most excited about? Well, first of all, Tap Factory is a high quality, well outfitted destination for learning and, and um, you know, for studios to get started. Um, we have great people teaching. I see the Tap Factory, first of all, feeding into the Caribbean and South America, bringing students from those locations. One of the concerns that uh, I know that people that have entered into this sector have is that in order to get trained today, people are going away to the United States and Canada but this is very expensive, which means that the training and education of that level is only being done by people that come from families that can afford it. What we can do with having this facility actually in Trinidad is that we can train all people and it doesn't matter about their socioeconomic background. Mm -hmm. I see the TAP factory becoming a beacon for other evolving geographies, as I say, a sample, a white paper of how to do it, for example, when we are doing work in Kenya. I will be asking the people that I'm working with in Kenya to come and see the opening. And I know that um, we succeeded in India, we've succeeded in the Philippines, and I think the Tamp Factory is really gonna be a beacon and an example as to how it can be done properly. Joan, you know, we can chat with you forever, <laughs> but unfortunately we're out of time at this time. Thank you so much uh, for this, the, the time you've given us this afternoon for sharing with our audience, our international audience and our local audience, most importantly, in terms of the opportunities uh, that exist in this sector for us in Trinidad and Tobago and of course the wider Caribbean. Thank you. We love you and we look forward to working with you, Ms. Vogelsang. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. The love is, is mutual. Yes. Thank you. I would 100% recommend uh, the BFA in digital media. This program will be like really important. That way animation will be taken more seriously and less of like a kind of side job or a hobby. It's very beneficial for students who really like to create things and I think it allows them to grow that passion and allows them to be able to enter an industry that really can use that passion. There's all those different categories that students could fall into and find their niche. I think it's just like another way uh, um, of bringing art to life. It has its challenges, but it's worth it at the end. One of the first monuments you notice when you get on campus at Tamano is a bronze sculpture of a pedagogical figure seated on a bench. His gentle gesture and quiet teaching completely and permanently are fixing the attention of two children. His ruffled color and breeches speaking to a time and place far from the one where he now sits. This miniature is a representation of an iconic contemporary figure. The man who for our university embodies the ethos of the bronze sculpture. This 3D printed replica, created by final year students in the university's animation program, is of Professor Kenneth Julian, one of the architects of our country's transformation from an agricultural colony to pioneers in the fields of energy and education, 
and one of the architects of our transformation into today's digital domain. Guiding the last six decades of advancement, Professor Julian has witnessed and inspired our own stories and landscapes of growth and development. He will now forever have a seat on one of the newest campuses in the world. Here, his vision, teaching and stories will continue to be told and unfold. Today, we honor Professor Julian as we continue to animate our distinct future and tell our uniquely profound truths and stories. Ladies and gentlemen, teacher, scientist, visionary, Professor Kenneth S. Julian. It is a, a great opportunity and an honor to be asked in a way to address this group of young, fresh faces. I'm including those who are so much asleep right now. Wake up. <laughs> I have a few words to say to you. Um, a university uh, is a luxury. And it's all at the cost of taxpayers' money. Sometimes uh, the question um, has arisen, uh, why a UTT? Why should there be a University of Trinidad and Tobago, considering the fact that uh, UWI, of which Trinidad and Tobago is a principal uh, actor or participant, <coughs> I think it's almost 70 years old. An occasion like this, however, uh, makes the point uh, that for any country, small or large, in our case, very small, uh, to move forward, occasionally it has to take the lead <laughs> in the development of technology. And today, of course, technology is what drives the whole development process. So in a way, uh, UTT, um, University of Trinidad and Tobago, when it was first established, <clears throat> part of its mandate was to ensure that Trinidad and Tobago identified what are the needs of Trinidad, to some extent the region. Uh, and these needs, of course, have trained very dramatically. All these needs are now technology-driven. And in order to have a place in the world, uh, you have to be in that space of technology, new technology, etc. Of course, the hope is that while, on the one hand, we can make use of the available technology, a university really justifies its existence if it can go beyond that, if it can develop its own technology based on its own environment. So in a way, this is a, a next step uh, in technology, which is where the world is going. sitting here really because of Professor Julian, aren't we? Absolutely. And I don't think, I, I think the audience need to understand this moment, what it means, you know, in 2008, when the idea and the concept of animation at UTT occurred, it was because of Professor Julian. And as you said, that th we won't be sitting here talking about employing our young people in this, in, this, in this space right now if it was not for Professor Julian. And I remember one of the things he said to me when, when, when he, I was hired by UCT was, I want, I want animation to be successful as an art form, but most importantly, I want to make sure that it becomes a business. Correct. And that is the balance that he, he brings. And isn't it remarkable that that one gentleman has really heralded our 
development as a country literally literally from independence through now even though he's not active as he once was uh, on the scene you know whether it was the energy sector or light manufacturing sector um, into the digital age exactly. he's taken us from the industrial revolution into the digital age think yeah. about that that's an intoxicating mix I think in terms of his character of humility and confidence. Exactly. The DNA of a good Trindigunian. Absolutely. And I think he's a, <laughs> you know, he's a futurist also. He foresee the future from, w w you know, how important oil and gas was at that point to now, you know, without even seeing an actual thing happening in the Caribbean to do with digitization. Yes. There was nothing when I was brought to the table to see take animation and make it work at UTT. You know, there was no proof that Correct. we could do this. We have, we had at that point in 2008, no history of animation, none. And the wow. other thing I appreciate about Professor Julian is the fact that he gave a woman a position like that. Amen. He gave a woman because yes. IT technology, all these kind of things are male driven. And he gave me the space to make it happen and I appreciate him so much and I'm so thankful that you know he's able to see this today and we as people will be very thankful for that vision and as I said that humility um, but that confidence to understand that we can do it to see opportunity in the absence of anything professor so, Julian thank you thank you so very much sir you know, this brings us to another very, very important person in this process. Wendy, she's my namesake. I love her so much. <laughs> the Honorable Minister of Planning and Development, Camille robinson Regis. I mean, her vision for this here is also something that m give us the positioning that we have now. Absolutely. You know, this could not happen as most of the things in life, Camille, as you know, without the cash. Mm. And uh, Minister Robinson Regis from inception, as you said, you know, Prof had the vision. Mm -hmm. um, she bought into it <laughs> um, and took a little bit of a risk in doing so, which I so appreciate. You know, tell us a little bit about that. So that that came about through the um, through the IDB. Yes. And we have to shout out to the IDB team too, right? Vashti Absolutely. and, and the others. Krista. Krista, Krista, who is no longer here with us. But Krista, I know you're looking. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the call um, from IDB came regarding um, Global Services Program Grant. Yes. And um, we applied through, of course, the um, push from Professor Julian. Yes. Yes, um, brought me to the table to actually um, go forward for that for that um, for that grant and when once we sort of got the okay to move forward with the grant we had to like move really quickly because obviously that money needs to be spent yes <laughs> so the first the first grant through again through the minister um, afforded us to start with the physical things the space and the equipment and the hardware and things like that and we then had to go to another phase and IDB came through again yes. right through the IDB lab so therefore the ministry itself and when people hear um, when people hear for instance Ministry of Planning they don't think this they don't think no. well what does planning have to do with animation oh correct but yeah. that's the nature of that ministry it is to plan our future exactly. to provide the support and the vision um, and mainly the support of the Ministry of Trade in terms of our commercial development education in terms of preparing our nationals to take advantage of some of the work that trade is doing and others. Yes. So having a minister who understands, um, a politician who is capable of taking a little risk and a, a few hits for an idea. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we need more of those. It speaks <laughs> volumes and we thank her. We thank Absolutely. Minister Camille robinson Regis tremendously um, and her ministry for their continuous and consistent support of um, Tap Factory. Absolutely. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. We're now in the Chroma Key Studio, where all kinds of magic happens, like wiggling our noses and going to Tobago. Without even packing, Wendy. Isn't that awesome? Absolutely. So let's go to the conference now, and we are going to hop over to the Cove Tobago Eco Industrial and Business Park. And here we have the chairman, Mr. Kamau Akili, 
here with us today. Isn't that awesome? Absolutely. Mr. Keeley, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for doing this with us. We're going to jump right into our questions with you. Uh, and our first question is, why uh, this partnership with UTT? Um, do you see an impact in terms of your animation studio, your tourism sector? Why UTT? Why now? No, the eco-industrial and business development company of Tobago, that is EATCOT, has a mandate from the Tobago House of Assembly for to diversify and develop the economy of Tobago. And we have been looking at various avenues to achieve this diversification. We see animation as one such avenue. Coming out of the creative sectors, we see uh, having an animation studio in Tobago providing an opportunity for us to provide for the development of our young people in Tobago in the digital age providing opportunities for them. And in seeking to develop the animation sector, we have seen in the University of Trinidad and Tobago, UTT, a uh, partner who we consider leading academically and otherwise in the animation sector development in Trinidad and Tobago. So we have sought a partnership with UTT to establish an animation studio in Tobago and to provide the training to move this sector forward. Absolutely great timing um, on the part of Tobago in this regard. And uh, as you very well know, the animation uh, industry globally is growing exponentially. It's one of those that came out of the pandemic or is coming out of the pandemic stronger than most others. How do you see um, this studio, the Cove Animation Studio, impacting the lives of young Tobagoonians, I would say in the next few years, next five or ten years? Well, as you said, it's animation is a growing sector. And as the world digitization increases, the impact of animation is expected to grow. So the development of this sector provides for the engagement of Tobagonians and particularly young Tobagonians in creation, the, the, the creation of products, not only for Tobago, but to satisfy a demand globally. With specific reference to Tobago, animation provides for the development of the other sectors of the economy. There is advertising, for example. If you look at tourism, there are benefits to be had from advertising Tobago through animation, through products that are the result of animation. Also, through the knowledge of persons outside of Tobago of animation products originated from Tobago, you have further, let us say, the further spread of the information about the island of Tobago. So in that way, it also contributes to the development of tourism. Yeah. And having an animation studio in Tobago also can provide an opportunity for persons who uh, live elsewhere to actually come and work with our animators in Tobago. Yes. So you have a multiplicity of, of benefits that can arise from having an animation studio in Tobago. Thank you. Great. So Chairman, I'm really, really excited because I am the head of the animation department at the university. So we've worked closely with your team to make sure this happens. Um, there's an excitement about the Tobago Cove because of the fact that tourism is normally your thing in Tobago. That's a fact. And now you're merging tourism and digitization. To me, that's a very, very exciting thing. How do you feel about that shift and how do you think it will impact Tobago?
the shift has great potential. There are significant benefits to be had in terms of youth using animation to sell the story of Tobago. Tobago has a very rich history. We have an, a unique culture. If we look, for example, at something like the Tobago Heritage Festival, where you have a multitude of different aspects of the culture of Tobago that can be promoted, digitization will help us tremendously in doing that and thereby promoting Tobago. Um, let us take, for example, our stories of Anansi, who we call um, um, Nancy Tory. Um, <laughs> Imagine having uh, Anansi stories um, being told through digitization. Yeah. Not only would it um, assist in our young Tobagonians or Tobagonian children learning about their, their, their history and their culture, but it also allows us to tell a story to the world and to some extent, um, monetize. Yes. Uh, and the, that, that the, sort of the segues into my question aspect. that I was yeah. about to ask. Sorry, I was just saying that sort of segue into the question I was about to ask about, about stories, because there's so much rich stories in Tobago. So you definitely see that there's going to be um, an evolution in storytelling in Tobago. It's what you're saying. Yes, yes. We have come from the era of our grandparents telling us stories, sitting on the front step on a moonlit night, to storytelling by radio. Now we have the television and, and other forms of um, audiovisual. And now we can go to the um, animation sector and have animated stories, which is such, has so much appeal to um, our young people and even our adults. That's right. You know, as you were speaking, Mr. Keel, I thought of when you said a Nancy, I, I got goosebumps because, yes, yeah. you know, those stories are timeless. Uh, they are also universal in terms of the message of most of their Nancy stories translate well in any culture. I think you gave us something to, yes, definitely. <laughs> to invest a <laughs> lot more time with you and your team on developing. <laughs> if I was a young person right now getting into animation, I would look to the Anansi stories because they have such a, a, a moral basis and they are so Absolutely. interesting and they lend themselves to animation. Anansi Absolutely. Is spider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Mr. Keel, if I were a little older with deeper pockets, I would invest in your younger youth <laughs> stories exactly. of Nancy yes, yes, and the yes. animation of same. <laughs> so we have, we see a very bright future ahead in terms of animation. And with this continued collaboration with the University of Trinidad and Tobago, we expect good things going forward. Tobago needs the diversification. Yes, tourism is very important to us, and it continues to be important. But when we marry that tourism and other economic activities with animation, we can only see an improvement in terms of the way we do things, the way we sell Tobago, and the opportunities that we can offer to Tobagonians. That's fantastic. I also, I also think it's what you offer to the world. So yes. thank you. We thank you so much for spending this You're time with welcome. us. You're most welcome. When we look forward at UTT to working with you, this is going to be a very successful partnership. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the virtual ribbon cutting. But Camille, why a virtual ribbon cutting? Wendy, we cannot be a digital media hub without doing something fancy with virtual, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so because, now the thing is, COVID also puts us into positions where, you know, somebody can't make it or, you know, now with digitization, 
we could do so many beautiful things and we wanted to demonstrate to the world because we know that the world is watching that our students because a lot of what you're seeing here our students work also that our students could do exciting things with digitization with animation with virtual reality and what better way to do this than with our opening well let's get this show on the road guys give us a moment to get back to our team on set Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've been waiting for. With me is Professor Clement Ember, Chairman of UTT, Professor Prakash Pasad, President of UTT, and Professor Marlon Knights, Vice President Commercial Projects UTT, as well as Head of Animation, Ms. Camille Salvon Abrams and a few of our fourth year students and recent graduates of the animation program. At this time, we'd like to welcome Minister Nian Gatsby Dolly, our Minister of Education, to cut our virtual ribbon. There we have it, the animation of a dream. Thank you so much for joining us. And do remember to find the Anime Carib Animation Festival on a device near you. Again, from all of us, thank you. And always remember, never stop animating your dreams. Mwah!